Good morning boys and girls. It is yet another lovely Sunday to see you guys today. And I have Auntie Ruth and Auntie Anne with me. Morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Yes. So before we continue, shall we open the word of prayer? Jesus loves me. I love Jesus. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for how you have been with us as we have been learning. Be with us today and with whoever will teach us that we may understand and be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, if you remember last week and the previous weeks, we've been looking at creation. Mm -hmm. And last week, Auntie Ruth told us about what God did on day six and day seven. Mm -hmm. Can we remember what he did? Yes. yes. He um, created the animals and man on day six. Okay. And man was very special. Yes, but did man have a name? Yes. Can you remember his name? His name was Adam. Adam. Yes, yes. And we also heard that on the seventh day, God rested. Mm. And it is an important day, and we are also required to rest, rest on that day. So today we're going to look at something different, and we'll see what happened in the garden where Adam was with the animals. Mm. Who's going to be with us? So I think it's Auntie Ruth. But before we do that, we're going to sing a song. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. What song are we going to sing? Hmm. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. My head and shoulders, knees and toes. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. My eyes and ears and mouth and nose. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Uh, that was fun. That was very fun. And we learned that God made us fearfully and wonderfully made on the day six. All right. Auntie told us that now God had finished all creation. Six days. Seventh day, he rested. And he had put Adam, the man he had created on the sixth day, in the Garden of Eden. And it was good. After he created man, he said it was very good. So he put the man in the Garden of Eden. What was found in the Garden of Eden, Auntie Anne? There were lots of fruits. There was food, there were animals, there was a river which passed in the middle of the garden. Yes, that was a very nice place. Were the animals fighting? No. Were they thorns? No. Everything was very good. Yes. God had put Adam in the Garden of Eden to look after it, to make it nice. He put the animals there. There were plants, there were flowers and what? And Adam didn't even have someone to speak to. Mm -hmm. But God was clever. Mm -hmm. He said, no, Adam, let me give you work. So he gave Adam work. Okay. Mm. There were birds in the air, yes. fishes in the rivers, and animals. But how would he know that this is animal is a lion mm. if he had no name? Hmm. I don't know. You don't know. Hmm. So God gave Adam work to do. Okay. He brought all the animals wow. to Adam hmm. and told Adam, you give them names. Hmm. How many animals were there? Oh, there were many. many. 
somewhere big, somewhere small, somewhere growing on the sun, somewhere in the waters, somewhere big on the trees, somewhere on the mountains, somewhere flying, a lot of animals. So that Adam had a lot, lot of work. work. Yes, Adam had a lot of work. So God brought the animals to Adam. Huh? And one of these animals came <laughs> with a long neck. What do you think that animal was? Long neck? Yes. Hmm. A giraffe. <laughs> yes. So he said, this one is a giraffe. Mm -hmm. The giraffe passed. And some animals came, a small black animal mm -hmm. with a nice web, and it had the eight legs. What do you think that animal was? A spider! Yes, so you will see spider! And it is spider. Huh? And another animal came, brown the lot of men. And it was, ooh. What do you think Adam named it? the lion. lion yes so god gave adam work to name all the animals mm. and what adam named those but animals that was the name okay. and imagine it was a lot of work mm. it was not just saying i'm lulu ruth no adam had to think mm -hmm. What name am I going to give this little thing? Huh? It burrows inside. And sometimes we don't like it because it eats things in our storerooms. <laughs> <laughs> what animal was that? Huh? The one that eats things in our storerooms. Yes. The rats. The rats. <laughs> yes. God had, had Adam had to think. Mm -hmm. huh? So he had to work to think and name all the animals. Wow. But even when he finished all the animals, the animals were around him, he could not talk to them. Mm. Huh? Oh. He must have been lonely. He was very lonely. Mm. He was very lonely. But he had all these animals. He couldn't talk to them. Uh, they would come, scratch him, <laughs> but he couldn't talk to them, they could not understand each other. Hmm. Though he talked to God, every evening God could come wow. to the garden and talk to him. But he didn't have anyone like him to hmm. talk to him. Oh, I think God knew mm -hmm. that Adam will need someone to talk to. Yes, yes boys and girls. And and Anne will tell us next week who that someone was. So boys and girls, we know that in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. God gave work to Adam mm -hmm. to name all the animals. All the animals. Mm. Even the ones as small as flies, mosquitoes. Yes. Mosquitoes. Yes. <laughs> mosquitoes. Yes, everything. He had to name them. And what he named them, that was the name. Mm -hmm. But boys and girls, it was not easy. Mm. He had to think. Mm -hmm. He had to think, mm -hmm. what name am I going to give this animal? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so Adam was given work by God to name all the animals, and he did that. Mm -hmm. The animals had friends, they would play, but an Adam was alone. He had no one to talk to, but he talked to God. Mm. But he needed someone like himself. So boys and girls, next week we'll continue.
to know, to learn what happened to Adam and what God did so that Adam was not going to be alone. Adam was going to have someone you would talk to, okay. and someone you would love. Wow. 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 Hmm. Can we sing a song? Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. He loves them one by one. Short or tall? Short or tall. Big or little, short or tall. Big or little, short or tall. Big or little, he loves them one by one. Just like God loved Adam. Yes. So he loves us too. Very yes. much. Mm -hmm. He loves us very much. That's why we are made in his image. We are made in his image. Mm -hmm. He loves us very, very much. Okay, boys and girls, our memory verse today, our memory verse today, who can think of one? Psalm 19, verse 1. Hmm. And Anne? Yes. Psalm 19, verse 1. Psalm what 19, does it verse say? 1. What does it say? It says... Hmm? Hmm. The heavens, heavens declare, declare the glory, glory of God. Hmm. Let's say it, boys and girls. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. Again. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. Okay, boys and girls, we'll learn some more next week yeah. and we'll continue with our memory verse. Wonderful. We shouldn't forget yeah. that the heavens mm -hmm. declare the, the glory of God. God. Bye. 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 Good morning boys and girls. Today we are going to look at another parable and we are going to consider the parable of the ten miners. Before we turn to the Bible shall we just look to God in prayer. Father God in heaven we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word that makes it very clear how we ought to live not as unwise but as people that should commit their lives to you and live for you in all we do and in all we say. Father God in heaven, it is our prayer that you may speak to us in this day. It's in Jesus' name that we ask and pray. Amen. So we shall turn to Luke chapter 19, verses 11 to 27, to read about the parable of the ten miners. The Bible reads, As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten miners and said to them, engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your miner has made ten miners more. 
And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your miner has made five miners. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another man, then another came, saying, Lord, here is your miner, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you, did you not put my money in the bank and at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the miner from him and give it to the one who has the ten miners. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten miners. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for this, these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. That marks a reading of God's word. Boys and, girl, what, boys and girls, what we see in this parable is um, a nobleman, a nobleman, a man who was of great um, standing, and he was he was scheduled to be made king. This man was to be made king in a far country, so he had to leave where he was living to go to another country, so that he could be made king, and then return to his own country. So this man, before he set out to go to uh, the far country, he called ten of his servants. And to each of those servants, he gave a minor. So to the ten servants, he left each one with a minor. So in total, he left ten minors. And he told these servants that they were to do business with that, those minor, the minor, until he returned. Boys and girls, I would like you to understand that uh, a minor is uh, a lot of money. It's a lot of money that one would have to work for for many months to earn. And so in our currency, Zambian currency, I would just like to illustrate the minor with the highest note that we have, which is a hundred kwacha. And so, uh, in uh, illustrating this, I would uh, be saying each one of the ten servants was given a hundred kwacha, and each one was told, with this hundred kwacha, with this one miner, do business. And when I come, I want to find this hundred kwacha multiplied. So those are the instructions that uh, this noble man gave to his ten servants. So this man set out to go so that he could be made king and come back as king of this, of this nation. The Bible also tells us that um, there were other people that knew that this man was going away to a far country so that he could be made king. So these people were called the citizens. So these citizens, when they heard about um, the man going away to become king, they rejected his kingship and they did not want him to be king at all. So they sent some people after him. They sent some people after the nobleman to tell the nobleman that they did not want him to return as their king. So they outrightly rejected this nobleman's kingship. But all the same, the nobleman proceeded on his journey. And after some time, this nobleman came back. And when he got back, he called for the ten servants 
that he had given a minor to. So he wanted each of the ten servants to explain how they had used the miners to do business and how much money they had actually made from the one miner that each person was given. So then the Bible tells us only about three of the ten servants. And so three is what the Bible gives us details for in terms of what they reported to the king. So the first man approached the king and this is what he explained to the king. Remember I said that uh, we'll use the hundred kwacha as, uh, as a minor. So this uh, servant, the first servant, went in to see the king and said, Lord, with the minor that you gave me, the one minor that you gave me, I have made 10 additional miners. And so, he presented before his master the 10 miners. And in our example, he presented to the master the 100 kwacha notes, 10 of them. So from the one that was given by the master, he presented to him that he had done business and he had made 10 more. The Bible does not tell us what kind of business this man did, but we can just imagine maybe in our day and age, here we could do business of growing farm produce and selling. It can be animals, it can be vegetables, or it can just be trading. You buy goods like sweets, like biscuits, like rice, and resell. But ultimately what the Bible points to us is that this man did business and from the business that he did, he made 10 more miners. And the king was very happy with this man. And he said to this man, good servant, because you have been faithful in little things, I'll put you in charge of many things. And he put him in charge of 10 cities. Then came the servant, another servant, the second servant, who was also given just one minor, just 100 kwacha. So this one also went before the king and he presented to the king five more miners. He went to the master and said, Master, from the one miner, I have made five more. The master was equally pleased with this man and he gave him 10 cities to be in charge of. Then king, then came the third servant that we are told about. This third servant went before the master and he told the master, Master, you gave me one minor. I know that you are a hard man. And because I know that you are a hard man, who reaps where you have not sown, and who takes out what you have not uh, deposited, I got your miner and I put it in a piece of cloth. I put it in a piece of cloth and put it away. And so here is your, your miner. The king at this point was upset with this man. And he called him, you wicked servant. And he commanded that the one miner that uh, he had kept for the master be given to the man that had the 10 miners, the man that had made 10 more miners. And that is what was done. And the people who were around were asking, but how come? How do you give the person who already has more? Then the king said to the one that has more shall be given. Then we have uh, another category of people that we talked about earlier. Those that outrightly rejected the kingship of this man even before he went. So when this nobleman returned as king, he called for them and he said, bring those men, let them be slaughtered before me because they did not want me to be their king. And so these people were slaughtered before the king because they had outright, outrightly 
rejected the kingship of this man. So then, boys and girls, what do we see in this parable? I would like you to take note of the fact that we see clear three classes of people in this parable. Firstly, from the ten servants, then um, particularly the three that are reported about, we see two classes of people. We see the servants that were obedient, the servants that followed the instruction of the master. They did the business with the ten miners, and they actually made more money. One made ten more miners, the other one made five more miners. And the king was pleased with the two and actually rewarded them. So these four in one category, which we refer to as the obedient servants. Then we see the one last servant, the third servant, who did nothing with uh, the, the miner. He hid it and put it out of sight and he did not want to do anything. He did not want to do any business with the master's miner. So this is another category, the wicked servant. And lastly, we have another category of the outright rebels, those that outrightly rejected the kingship of this man. So the obedient servant, number one, number two, the wicked servant, and three, the outright rebels. So then, boys and girls, what do we learn from this parable? What is there for us to learn in this parable? I would like you to take note uh, as a first point, boys and girls, that um, in this parable, the noble man represents the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven to earth. He came to die on the cross of Calvary so that everyone who repents of their sins and accepts Jesus Christ as a personal Savior and Lord will be forgiven of their sins and when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary he rose again on the third day and before he ascended into heaven Jesus Christ met his disciples and told them go therefore and preach to all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to to follow all that I had commanded and the Lord Jesus Christ made it clear to the disciples that he was to return to be the judge of the world. He would come back to judge the world. And so, just like this uh, nobleman went away and later on returned as king to make each person account for the minor and to also judge those that outrightly rejected him. Even so, it shall be that the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to earth, died on the cross of Calvary, and ascended into heaven, will come back to earth again, and he will come and judge each person, and each person according to what they have actually done. Number two, boys and girls, I would like you to note that in this parable, the minor represents the word of God. It represents the word of God and the grace of God that has been given to all men. Boys and girls, Sunday in, Sunday out, at home, at school, you listen to the word of God. We all listen to the word of God in various circumstances. We are listening to the word of God and the grace of God has been given to everyone. And so this is what the minor represent in this parable. Then we are told about the outright. We, we, I would like us to look at um, as a fourth thing, as a third thing, the obedient servants. In this parable, the obedient servants represent the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. They represent the people that have heard the word of God and they have heard that Jesus Christ is the only Savior that can save us from all known sin. And they have surrendered to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have surrendered to the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ. They allow Jesus Christ to rule in their hearts and to rule in their lives. The obedient servant represent people 
that live for God, the people that follow the instruction of the Lord to make disciples of all nations, to command everyone to follow that which the Lord Jesus Christ has commanded, the people who to their faith they add goodness, they add, they add self-control, they, they add brotherly love, they add godliness. These are the obedient people and this is um, what we see here. And what is true also is that these people that live righteously and follow the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ comes back to judge the world at his second coming, he is going to reward them. Just like he rewarded the two servants, one with five cities, the other one with uh, ten cities, the Lord Jesus Christ will reward each one of his children for all that they have done in service to God. Boys and girls, I'd like you to know that uh, it does not mean that uh, we are saved because of the works that we have done. The Bible makes it clear that um, we are saved by grace through faith, not because of anything that we have done, but it's really just the grace of God. But what is being pointed out here is that we are not saved to just sit around and do nothing about the master's business. We have been saved so that we can preach the gospel to other people, that we can live righteous lives and do that which the Lord has commanded us to do. And so the Lord at his second coming, he is going to reward each believer, each Christian, according to the kind of service that they have rendered to God. That is what this parable is pointing to us. It's pointing us to us that the rewards will be different for Christians and it will be dependent on how they actually serve God. And I would um, like you to note that uh, both categories of the, 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 the five, the, the first man who made five minors and the one that made ten more minors represent the people that have been forgiven of their sins. They have been pardoned of their sin. They live a new life and they not, do not live life without regarding the commandments of Christ. They have a new life and they follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ returns, he's going to give this category of people rewards according to what each person has actually done. We'll now look at the fourth point, and this is the wicked servant. The wicked servant represents those people that have heard the gospel. They have heard the word of God. Maybe like you, some of you children, you come to church. When you go home, you have nothing to do with the Bible. You have nothing to do with praying. You have no consciousness to do that which you may have learned at Sunday school. You have not repented of all non-sin and, and you do not bother about that which you have heard through the instruction of the word of God. And so, just like we saw, when the master came and this servant presented to him that I have not done anything, I just simply put the money away, the master was upset with this servant and actually got away the minor that he was given. So shall it be that those that have not repented of their sins, those that do not live according to the standards of the word of God, the Lord is going to reject them before his sight. Then boys and girls will look at the, another point, number five, the outright rebels. What do they represent? These outright rebels represent those that reject Christ Jesus. They have made up minds that Jesus Christ is not the savior of the world. They are like those Jews in the Bible times who never accepted Jesus Christ as the savior of the world, but rejected him. They do not recognize his lordship and they are total enemies of God and they do not want the Lord Jesus Christ to reign over, over them. The truth of the matter is that even though these people reject the Lord Jesus Christ, it does not change anything because the master will come back anyway. Jesus Christ will come back at his second coming, he's going to judge them. 
and just like he commanded that these citizens, just like the nobleman who had become king, commanded that these citizens should be brought before him and be slaughtered before him, so shall it be to those that um, reject Jesus Christ outrightly. They shall be thrown to eternal dominations at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So boys and girls, it does not pay to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, I would like you to note that uh, this parable warns us that each one will personally face the consequences of their decisions. The decisions that we actually make in this life on earth, whether to save God or to oppose him. And we'll also face the consequences of the lifestyle that we actually adopt. Boys and girls, there's no neutral position with regard to Christ. Each of us is one of the three categories. You are either the obedient servant, the wicked servant, or the outright uh, rebel. I hope none here are actively opposing the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are opposing the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to repent and quickly go before God and accept him as a personal savior and Lord, or else you will suffer the wrath of God at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you profess to know Jesus, you are one that comes to church, listen to the word of God, no, do nothing about it, do not apply yourself to work to the word of the Lord. You are just living for yourself and doing no business for Lord Jesus Christ. You equally need to repent of your sin. And you need to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because that, what, that is what God requires. That each one to who is exposed to God's word, each one to whom the grace of God has been made known, should come to a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, those that have personally repented of their sins and have surrendered to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ and live towards fulfilling God's purposes and His will, will definitely receive a reward in proportion to how they have served God at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. My prayer for you, boys and girls, is that boys and girls, is that you may be uh, children that will desire to walk with Jesus all the days of your life that you live on this earth, that you give the Lord Jesus Christ complete control, that you, you yield your life to him, and that you accept the joy that he gives to those who yield their lives to him. My prayer, dear boys and girls, is that you will be desirous to learn to speak to the Lord Jesus Christ, to pray to him, to confess your sins, to open your lives and let Jesus Christ rule in your hearts and that you will be a people that will be willing to serve him, you'll be willing to speak of him and to live lives that show that Jesus Christ lives in you, that your deeds, your thoughts, your words will speak of the love that the Lord Jesus Christ has demonstrated to us human beings. I pray, boys and girls, that you may learn to read God's word, for this is how you are going to know that which the Lord has commanded, that which you, are, you should be following, that you will live lives that please God in holiness and joy. Amen. Mabwenzi la tu Yesu ati konda konda fe ti punzite buye Yesu ti konda ne na nutu ti saywali.
touch you. 